I started working in the Corneal Clinic about three years ago, and the idea was that I'd help um, the team with their um, keratoconic patients. I've kept a, a, a note of the sort of patients that I've been seeing in the um, clinic over the last three years, and this is the data from the last year. And as is expected, um, the majority of the patients are indeed um, keratoconic, but I also see a lot of graft patients, a lot of the follow-up um, patients following uh, corneal ulcers who've initially presented through eye casualty, corneal dystrophies, a few glaucomas thrown in there. I think hospital optometrists could become a very valued member of the um, team within a corneal clinic because we've got the skills, um, we understand um, refraction and um, contact lens fitting which are quite a key part of the um, management of patients in the corneal clinic and now that you've got the independent prescribing um, we've become more useful because we can actually treat some of the problems um, in, in, that the patients present with in those clinics. This is really why um, I think I was first brought into the clinic because what was happening was that um, any doctor who was working in the corneal clinic, as soon as they saw a patient um, had keratoconus, they referred them down to us in the contact lens um, department and asked us to fit them with contact lenses. Um, I think we need to think, think very carefully about how we manage the keratoconic patients and optometrists are very well placed to be able to manage these patients. The learning curve was definitely steep because originally I was just going there to talk about the keratoconics and then suddenly I was dealing with microbial keratitis and graft rejection and things that I'd always been taught just refer straight away to the eye emergency department. So yes, the, the, it was a very steep learning curve. I'm very lucky in Manchester, it's an excellent hospital and there's a very good team um, and, um, and I was very also very fortunate because um, I was given support by my own managers to work in that clinic um, and gradually guidelines have been um, drawn up. But you're, you always learn, you always see things that you've never seen before. Um, so um, the curve continues to be steep. Another reason patients re reject is corneal vascularisation. So we shouldn't be fitting these, keratocon these keratoconics with big scleral lenses and just pushing and pushing and pushing and the near vascularisation is growing in and in and in, in, in because somebody is going to have to deal with that, that patient may need um, a corneal graft eventually. So if you're having problems with the contact lens fitting, sit back, talk to a colleague, see how you can improve it. You can't ignore um, corneal vascularization. Take a photograph of it. Is it changing? Is that patient in the best lens? Um, because sadly, some of the patients that arrive in Manchester, we just wish we'd had them sort of five years earlier when they didn't have all the near vascularization because sometimes we only get them when there's a problem and it's much better to stop, know your limitations and refer on to the appropriate um, team. The clinics are busy and so you've got to respect um, that and and you've got to be you've got to become very good at making um, decisions and providing the best management plan for the patient if you're a good team player then then it's not difficult to slot into the clinic if you're prepared to work hard the question to ask is should every corneal clinic have an, op an optometrist working in it and I would say yes um, I'm completely biased um, so why because you know if you've got to present a business case to your um, team, you need to have some figures. So in the patients I've seen over the last year, um, just under 40% needed um, some advice on contact lens fitting and um, refraction. I'm lucky I've got my independent prescribing and I prescribed for just over 40% of the patients. Optometrists are very good at doing slit lamp examinations, looking at topographies, Occasionally we get an OCT to look at, um, but, um, but you know, optometrists are good at um, those skills. And we're also very good at communication, not just within, um, within ourselves, but we need to look at the, the broader picture. We need to look at the optometrists in the community. We need to tell them. So when they refer the patient in with the, um, say, the high sill um, that was mentioned earlier, we can say, completely understand why you've referred this patient in. It is just with the rule of stigmatism and we've now been able to do the topography um, and um, to support that. So communication within the hospital, but also with GPs and our community colleagues is so important. So yes, every um, corneal clinic should have an optometrist.